Praise God. Amen. It's happy to be back at church here today. And, Amen. Uh, looking at the Hughes clan out there. The one thing I know, no one was going to mess with Savannah, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one was going to mess with Savannah. One way or the other, no one was going to mess with her. Uh, Paul, uh, man, what he said today, uh, I, I think you're ready to serve with Paul. So uh, everything you said, I agree with. Uh, I came here to worship God. Uh, I listened to Paul. I listened to the things when I was gone. I want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to everyone because I never got a chance to. Uh, I was praising God for the good news I got from the doctor. Uh, things were really, really bad for us for a long time. Uh, we started getting good news. Um, I take this medicine and uh, and uh, the Lord told me that uh, I was healed. I just got to do what he tells me to do. And I don't even like to say the word uh, because he's taken it away from me. So, uh, but right now we're doing real well. Although the mess is a little bit rough. Lisa, Paul, Samantha can attest to, she was gone. She was pretty much gone. Uh, I was really scared and I'm usually not that scared. Uh, she caught COVID and I caught COVID. It was probably a good thing I did catch COVID because I was going down a bad road. I was getting very angry. Uh, I, I started witnessing for God and it turned out that it was just all about my anger. Uh, and I thought back on that and those eight days I was gone, I needed because I could come back closer to God. Believe me, they call me preacher at that church. I mean, in that hospital. I talk to everyone, I profess God to everyone. Uh, this may sound freaky, it does, but I was gonna baptize two nurses in the shower. Uh, and I, I know, I know, it's, 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 it's really sound. And, but it wasn't like that. I told them to come here and I praise God. I hope they come here and I invited a lot of people here. There were great conversations and Lisa just kept getting stronger and stronger as faith got stronger and stronger. I praise God. Uh, I asked him to bring her back to me, and he did. He brought her back to me. Now he brought her back to me with hoses and stuff like that. You know, I should have prayed a little more. You know, but uh, you know, he did, and it was a miracle. And uh, and I asked her, Paul, she remembers you saying it. She doesn't, but uh, I said, believe me, he sang two hours to get back to self out there. And I, and I want to thank you guys. I want to thank anybody that prayed for us. I felt it every minute of the day. Uh, God was with us, and I'm so happy. Uh, we got our Valentine dance, uh, our dance, uh, dinner the 17th, right? Yeah. Saturday the 17th. Valentine? Valentine's? <laughs> Valentine's dinner the 17th. Yeah. I hope and I pray that I got me some of that. I hope I got her again. And uh, I, I just, I want to thank you guys. I can't, uh, I just don't know what I do without God. And everything, and, and Paul just add to that, and, and Samantha, I think that we showed love downstairs. I think that we showed love downstairs, especially to Samantha. I think we gave her an invitation that what God wants for her, now it's up to her. Uh, she's been told, and I think we can tell a lot of people that. I know people told me that. I know that Paul, I sit in here years ago, and I sit right there, third row, so I can hear him. And he, he did that invitation over and over and over and over and over again and I walked away. I finally came up, but I believe that I walked away one more time. It would have been a lot better. And that's how it is. You're only off of this so many times. And then your heart will get hard too. I'm so glad that we took it. I'm so glad that we're here today. Praise God, Paul. Praise God. Let's get him here. Thank you guys. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise basin. He loves me, man. He just he was right. He said, You're back. He said, You're back. That's my man. Heck yeah. Well, at our Valentine's banquet we plan to have at the church, if you and Lisa show up, then it was not a mistake when you said we'll dance. I hope we all dance. Amen. We'll dance for joy. Amen. That you are here with us and Lisa is here with us. There'll be a reason to rejoice Amen. and a reason to dance and to be happy. God's people should be happy. We have a reason to be thrilled and excited. Today, I want us to look in the scriptures found in the book of Ephesians. And if you will, turn to the fourth chapter 
And in the time that we have remaining, I would like to read several verses with you and to talk about a subject put off and put on. Put off and put on. So we're going to look at a, a text that talks about the new man, what that means in this context. But the, the point of this message is to put off and to put on. And it may spill over to next week. But I want us to give special time to this. It's a very important message from God's Word. It's important to know that when you are in a church or listening to a preacher, someone who's presenting God, if they're not presenting God through the Scriptures, then they're not presenting God. That's very important. If someone presents to you their opinions or what they say they believe, if it is not through the Word of God, then it does not merit listening to. And so for that reason, I like to begin our messages in the Word of God, and all that I say thereafter is based on the Word of God. And God's Word is true. It gives us salvation by giving us the truth. And so we find in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, I begin reading at verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. So we find here that the blindness of a person's heart alienates a person from the life of God. Life comes by the Spirit of God. And to know Christ is to receive the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of life. And so it's impossible to have eternal life unless you have a relationship with God. And so we continue reading in verse 19, who, being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And so that is why we must adhere to the word of God, because the truth is in Jesus. God's word provides me truth to live by. And so, yes, I do sometimes listen to the opinions, the advice of others. But my truth, my compass in life is the word of God. We continue reading verse 22. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And so it's speaking of a person's spiritual condition, their old man, their old spiritual self. If left untouched by God, that old man is going to die corrupt. Does everyone follow with me? Because that's what God's Word teaches. It says that we have a self, that is your spiritual being, and if it was not for the Spirit of God, you would die corrupt, alienated from God. That's what God's Word teaches. Does everybody follow that? Therefore, you and I are in a spiritual condition that is called lost. Without God, you are separated from God and you are lost, which means in sin, you are dead. In sin, your situation is hopeless, helpless, and without God, you're going to die in sin. That's what God's Word teaches. But, in verse 24, or it goes to verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There is hope. And the hope is that your mind, your life can be renewed. How? That you put on, in verse 24, the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 
The salvation experience to be delivered from sin it is only possible by the power and the wisdom of God. I'll say that again. To be saved, to be delivered from the power, the penalty, and the very presence of sin, it is only possible through the power and the wisdom and the love of God. And that is what is called the new self. Put off the old and put on the new. That's what we read. In verse 22 it says put off. In verse 24 it says put on. So that religion cannot save, it cannot deliver, it cannot restore your relationship with God or reconcile. I'll say that again. God's word teaches that religion in itself is futile. It is worthless because religion, by definition, is based on your observation of works. And if your religion is all that you have, you are never going to be saved from sin. That is so important to know. You say, what then is religion? Because sometimes says, someone said to me the other day, they're in my house and they were doing some work. And I heard they called their boss on the phone. And they said, we got to help this guy. I think this guy's a preacher. And he's very religious. It is a mistake that so many people make. Even those who go to church, attending church, they say to themselves, I am religious. And what that says is, is that you have identified a set of rules. A set of commandments that you say, I'm living by this set of commandments, these ten, these five. And I'm going to church and I'm following these rules of conduct. And that necessarily is not wrong, by no means. If it's based on God's word, it says, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal. These are the commandments of God. And But people, they are then blinded by believing that by observing a list of do's and don'ts, that by becoming a religious person, a person who's following and practicing a list of rules, suddenly by their religion, they have by themselves changed their life. But the scripture here clearly teaches that is a sin in itself because you are denying what Christ came to do. Jesus came to save us from our sins by his death, by his resurrection, and by his second coming. It is by the power of God, by his wisdom and love, that a person's life can be redeemed, which means you have been saved by the power and the grace of God. It is not by yourselves, it is through God, the new man. Now, what does it mean, the new man? The new man is this. We are all pictured in the Bible as tents. Does everyone follow that? Because, listen carefully, and especially in the Old Testament scripture, the people often traveled from place to place, and their habitat was a tent. They lived in tents. Abraham is a good example. He moved and journeyed as God was leading him, and he would often be referring to himself as living in a tent. And he'd pick up his tent and move on. And so the scripture often then uses the analogy, life is like a tent. This physical body is like a tent. You sometimes are living here, you have a job here, and then you move on to a different place, and then a different circumstances happen, and eventually though this tent is finally laid down. Life on this earth dies. But the tent is set aside, but the spirit is never dead. Amen. So oftentimes the Bible pictures as an analogy that life is like a tent. This physical body is like a tent. We are living in a temporary tent, a habitat. Eventually that tent will go away, and those who know the Lord will be given an eternal body, a glorified body like Jesus. 
And no longer will we live in a temporary tent, but we will live in an eternal place with God, dwelling with Him everlasting. That is eternal life. The new man is the life of Christ that enters into the heart of a person who is saved. I want to say it again. The new man is when a person repents and puts their faith in God. And how does God say? God enters into your life, and your life, that tent, is no longer, listen, it is no longer the habitation of your spirit, but now God's spirit comes and abides within. And when God's spirit enters into your life, he gives you life and light, and suddenly, at that moment, and at the moment of God's dwelling in you, your life is forever changed. It is not a religious experience. It is a powerful experience that comes from God to you. Do you agree with that? Amen. Today I am here and I am a Christian and I am not professing to you that I was saved because I became a Baptist or a Protestant. And if I today was standing in a Catholic church, I would say to you, I am here today a Christian, but it is not because I became religious and became a Catholic. I am here today a Christian because God's Spirit lives in me, and by the blood of Christ, my sins have been paid for, and Jesus lives in me by the Spirit of God. It is a powerful experience. And God has changed my life by entering in to this tent. Not at all about religion. I'm a new, I have received the new man. And so, now carefully hear what I say. Life living for God is this. As I learn to die, I learn to live. Say, what does that mean? The interference in my life is me, Paul Adams. Now carefully understand this. Paul Adams by himself cannot serve God. Life is not about God changing Paul Adams. It's not that I'm suddenly changing and becoming a valuable, eternal person. A lot of times we see ourselves that way. Don't that's how we talk. Paul became a good person. That's not it. The Christian story is not about Paul becoming a good person. The Christian experience is this. When you learn this, and here it is. The Christian experience is this. Paul died, and now Christ lives in me. Amen. Amen. Wow. When you grasp that, that's the truth of God's Word. And here's how it's worded. In the book before Ephesians, you find the book called Galatians. And I want us to look at two very important texts there. One is found in the second chapter. So if you open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, look at how it is worded. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says it this way. I have been crucified with Christ. Think of it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Think of that. It's not about Paul going through a religious transformation. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's what people invented in churches. And it completely contradicts God's word. The Christian experience is found here in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives within me. Amen. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Praise God. When we learn that valuable truth, that it's not the Christian experience, it's not about Paul changing and becoming better and better. No! The truth of living for God is that Paul, he died on the cross with Jesus when he died for my sins. 
Therefore, Paul has died, and now Christ lives within me. And now in this tent, this temporary abode, Jesus lives by his spirit. And now I am a new creation, not religious, a new creation. And that is what it means to be a Christian. You're a new creation in God. Look at what he goes on to say. There's two texts I'm going to look at. Galatians chapter 6. And so if you turn over to Galatians chapter 6. And look at verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. I want to stop there because he's referring to the Judaic law. Here it says, by observing the law, and that's all, if that's all you're doing, then you've done nothing. It's of no value to you. Your religion is dead. That's what it brings. Death brings death. But it goes on to say, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but what does avail, what does make a difference, is a new creation. You see, we have been saved by the power of God, which means he has made you a new creation. I'm no longer Paul Adams trying to become a better person by doing this, not doing this, and going through these religious observations. That was dead in the Old Testament. Jesus came, and by his life, by his death, by his resurrection, and by his second coming, he has made a new covenant. It's a covenant of life. And by the power of God, I've been saved by believing in him. And God has entered into my life and he has changed me from within. Religion cannot do that. Religion is dead because religion is based on sinners and we cannot save ourselves. We need a savior and his name is Jesus. And Jesus has made us a new creation. And it is a powerful change. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I read, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. I read in Corinthians, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? So I want to stop here and we'll come back, I believe, next week. Have you received the new self? It's very important. I am not at all going to preach a message to you about how you can change your life. A lot of preachers do. And I'm not saying that I'm arguing or condemning other preachers. That's God's business. And they may teach some good habits that you may take on. They may say to you, if you're smoking, you need to quit smoking. Because if you're smoking two packs a day, you're probably going to have a heart attack or lung cancer. It's probably true. And is it good advice to quit? It is. You're sitting around, you're drinking every night a, a gallon of whiskey. And a preacher says you probably should stop doing that. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to have cirrhosis of the liver. It's good advice. But those things, listen, though they may be good in them themselves, good advice, and teaching you new habits to live by, but know this, there are those who profess to be wise, but they're becoming fools because they deny, they deny the power of godliness. You see, we are here today to preach to the world, yes, we need to change, but you can't change yourself. God can change you. And he does that when you believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord, as the one who died for your sins, that he was raised again. And by his name, you can be saved. And God brings his spirit into your life. And by his power, he transforms you. And by his power, you're liberated. You're free from the guilt of sin. You're free from the power of sin. And now you want a new life. 
That is the whole reason we have baptism. You are baptized, buried under water. You're buried with Christ on the cross. But thanks be to God, you don't stay down. You're raised again to walk in the newness of life. That's why we preach you must be saved in Jesus and Jesus alone. It's not about becoming Jesus and a Baptist. It's not about Jesus and also becoming a better person. No, it's about Jesus and Jesus only. It is by his power I have been redeemed. And listen, I'm living a new life, not by my own power, but by the power of God who lives in me. Do you believe that? Yes. That should be every Christian. You know, we have a time of testimony. I love it. But I want to also be careful because when it comes to the Christian experience, when it comes down to the core of Christianity, all of our testimonies are the same. And that means we are all saved by believing in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. Not trusting in yourself, not trusting in religion, but abandoning. Actually, we abandon trusting in ourselves. We abandon what we say is religion and we cling and hold on to Jesus and Him alone. Amen? And by putting your faith in Jesus, your life is changed by the power of God. Amen? Amen. I've never met a person yet who was saved by becoming religious. But thanks be to God, there are those who can say, I've been changed by the grace and the power of God. Amen. 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 We're going to have a time of invitation. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, today the invitation is open to you. I said to you before, Without mentioning anyone's name, one of my, as a preacher, one of the greatest heart breaks that I have is to preach a message about Jesus and someone walks away. And then they walk away. And then they hear it and they walk away. And as Fred said, every time their heart becomes hardened and the call of God becomes softer and softer and that person lives without God how sad that is how about you have you received the new the new man his name is Jesus have you it's time to put off and put on Jesus the invitation is given and it's given by God to you be responsible with it. Don't reject it. Receive it. Will you stand, please? Our Father, I pray that you give this invitation by the power and the wisdom and the love of your Spirit, that it would be given, Father, to each and every person here and anyone that might hear this video, that they would know that Jesus has made a promise. And his word says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever means all people. I pray today that today, while they have grace, the grace of God, that they would not waste it, but they would obey it and believe in Jesus at this moment, while he may be found. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.